How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel and if you're new here I highly suggest subscribing for you don't miss any more tech videos like this. Now what I have in front of us is the three common voice assists that are out there on today's market. I have on my right Amazon Echo, Google, as well as the new HomePod Siri. And we're just going to go ahead and test out the voice assist features and see what limitation one has over the other, asking it a variety of different questions and working our way up to the most difficult tasks. And also, if you happen to have one of these devices somewhere nearby during this video, don't worry, there's no need to mute them since each of them will be getting bleeped by their own command word, like this. So let's go ahead and begin by asking the most common question that's most likely going to be asked once a while. Start off with Alexa. How many feet are in one mile? One mile equals 5,280 feet. Right on. Hey Google, how many feet are in a mile? One mile equals 5,280 feet. Right on. How many feet are in a mile? One mile is 5,280 feet. Cool. So as we saw, they answered those questions really easy. Now let's go ahead and go into like some sort of non-fictional characters. Hey Alexa. Who is Rick Sanchez? Ricardo Leon Sanchez de Reynaldo is a Cuban-American journalist, radio host. That's not the Rick Sanchez I was thinking of. Hey Google, who is Rick Sanchez? According to Wikipedia, Rick Sanchez is one of the title characters from the Adult Swim animated television series Rick and Morty. Yep, that's who I had in mind. Let's see if Siri could answer that. Hey Siri, who is Rick Sanchez? I can't get that info for you here. Okay, let's try another celebrity for uh, Alexa and uh, Siri. Alexa, who is Ben Affleck? Benjamin Gaza Affleck Bolt is an American actor and filmmaker. That's it. Okay. Hey Siri, who is Ben Affleck? I can't get the answer to that on HomePod. All right, well, there's no support for that on Siri. While we're at the topic of Rick and Morty, let's see what would happen if I say this. Alexa, wubba lubba dub dub. To change your language to bird person, go to the settings section of your Alexa app. Just kidding. All right. Hey, Google. Wubba lubba dub dub. Are you in pain? In my people's tongue, it means I am in great pain. All right, she got it. Hey, Siri. Wubba lubba dub dub. No response. All right, well, that's interesting. Let's see how well they could translate words. Alexa, how do you say I'm the most superior voice assist in Mandarin? Sure, here's translated. Okay, here's translated. Sorry, I'm having trouble accessing your translated skill right now. Nah, technical difficulties. All right, I have that enabled. Those who don't know, uh, on Amazon Alexa's, they have skills, which is similar to an app store. I have the translated app enabled, but for some reason it's not working at the moment, so technical difficulties. Well, let's go ask Google. Hey Google, how do you say I'm the most superior voice assist in Mandarin? All right, right on, S sounds legit. Hey Siri, how do you say I'm the most superior voice assist in Mandarin? In Mandarin Chinese, I'm the most superior voices is. 我是个鼹鼠. All right. They both seem legit. I'm disappointed in Alexa. For those Mandarin speakers, from a rating 1 to 10, comment down below how accurate that was. I really want to know. Now let's go ahead and ask it some more silly questions. How tall are you? Like the third choice in Goldilocks. My height is just right. Alright, interesting. Google, how tall are you? I bet if we printed out all my code and stacked it up, it could get pretty tall. Since I'm software, that might be the only way to find out. Codes, all right. How tall are you? Not exceedingly big, but my gravitational pull is quite strong. Are you calling yourself a planet? All right, now let's go ahead and ask, uh, let's see. Alexa, what time is it in Florida? There are two time zones in Florida. Possible times are 4.49 p.m. or 5.49 p.m. and the time in the capital, Tallahassee, Florida. It's 5.49 p.m. Two time zones from Alexa. All right. Hey, Google. What time is it in Florida? The time in Tallahassee, Florida is 5.50 p.m. All right. Hey, Siri. What time is it in Florida? In Tallahassee, Florida, it's 5.50 p.m. Cool. So Alexa was the only one that actually gave us the two different time zones. The other two just gave us the capital of Florida's time zone. Now let's go ahead and ask it some historical questions for you enthusiasts. Alexa, what was Lamborghini's first car? The oldest Lamborghini car is Lamborghini 350 GTV. All right, that's correct. Hey Google, what was Lamborghini's first car? Lamborghini's first car is Lamborghini 350 GT. All right. Hey Siri, what was Lamborghini's first car? I can't get the answer to that on HomePod. Ooh, that's a shame. That was actually an easy question. You could have Wikipedia that. Now let's ask it for some recipes. Alexa. What are some good recipes for baking a cake? Okay, 
for bake and cake. I recommend the top recipe called to die for no bake cake pops, which takes 40 minutes to make. You can ask for more information or for more recipes say next. More information. It has 3.5 stars with one review. Two hours later. Do you want me to tell you the ingredients? Send this to your phone or hear the next. Cancel. Canceling. So with Alexa, it will actually give you the recipes as you're making it or sending that information to your phone, which is nice. Let's try Google. Google. What are some recipes for baking a cake? Okay, I've got a recipe called Simple White Cake from All Recipes. This recipe serves 12 and takes about 50 minutes to make. Does that sound good? Yes. Great, let's get started. Before we start, preheat oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, 175 degrees. Stop. Degree. Stop. Would you like to prepare the ingredients or skip to the instructions? Cancel. All right, done. So with Google, she was just walking through the recipe instead of just sending it to your phone. Alexa give you the option for two. Let's try Siri. What are some recipes for baking a cake? I can't get the answer to that on HomePod. And unfortunately, Siri doesn't have access to any recipes. Now let's go ahead and ask it a difficult task. Let's see if they could do it. Alexa, what's the next showtime for Black Panther? Black Panther is playing at two theaters nearby today. At Cinemark, showtimes are 7 o'clock, 7.15, 7.30, 8 o'clock in 3D, 8.30, 9 o'clock in stop. 3D, 9.30 in 3D. Alexa, stop. All right, let's ask Google. Hey, Google. What are the showtime for Black Panther? The next few showings of Black Panther at Cinemark Movies 14 are at 7 p.m., 7.15 p.m., and 7.30 p.m. Cool. What time is the showtime for Black Panther? Here's Black Panther playing at 12 theaters, but it's a bit far from you. Cinemark Movies 14 at 7, 7.15, 7.30, 8, and 8.30 p.m. Cine Lux Delta Cinema hey, Saver at stop. 7. So, pretty cool that each of them were able to give me the information for the next show time for Black Panther. Now, Alexa, on the other hand, she actually has the ability to make purchases by just simply using your voice. So, if you have the skill enabled Fandango, you can actually purchase your tickets without needing your phone. And that's kind of cool. Google and Siri, unfortunately, at the time of making this video, still doesn't have that. So now when it comes to music streaming services, unfortunately the HomePod is only restricted to work on your iTunes library or stream music with only Apple Music if you want to use just your voice. Now with these two devices, both of these support a variety of different music streaming services like Pandora, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. So keep that in mind when choosing between these three. But the Echo devices have a lot more support from other parties like Lyft, for example, and similar to Fandingo, where you're able to purchase tickets by just using your voice. Not only are you able to do that, but if you enable the Lyft skill, you can also order a Lyft driver to pick you up without needing to use your phone. But now let's go ahead and go over some really useful things that these voice assists can really be helpful at. So currently, all three of these can easily send a text message, read your recent message, but only these two are the only two that are able to actually make phone calls off the device and are also the only two that actually have voice protection recognition to prevent anybody from having access to your contacts for them to send messages or with these two to make a phone call without your consent. But Siri not only lacks that feature, also lacks a couple other features as well. For example, Siri, what's on my calendar for today? I wish I could, but I can access your calendar here. She doesn't do that, nor can she do Read my previous note. You'll need to authenticate on iPhone to continue. It will prompt me to my phone to go see my notes manually. But the Echo Dot and Google are more than capable of just doing that. For example, hey Google, what's on my calendar for tomorrow? Tomorrow, there's only one thing on your calendar. It's the 16th at 2 p.m. and its title is, finish the book. All right, Alexa, what's on my to-do list for tomorrow? You have one item on your to-do list. Finish this video. And these two things are something that Siri doesn't have. And to give you a demonstration on the voice recognition, let's say, let me try to disguise my voice. What's on my calendar? I couldn't verify your voice, so I can't share personal information. You can either try again or retrain the voice model in the Google Home app. Retrain? Okay, she meant to say retrain, but she says retrain. That's funny. And the Echo devices also have the same feature. And another thing that Siri is unfortunately unable to do is have multiple timers. So for example, hey Siri, set a timer for 15 minutes. 15 minutes and counting. Set a timer for 10 minutes. A timer is already running at 14 minutes and 52 seconds. Would you like to replace it? So she can only do one timer at a time, which is really misfortunate. While these two, set a timer in 15 minutes. 
Sure, 15 minutes, and we are starting now. Set a timer for 30 minutes. Second timer for 30 minutes, and here we go. Alexa, set a timer for 15 minutes. 15 minutes, starting now. Alexa, set a timer for 30 minutes. Second timer, 30 minutes, starting now. Yeah, these two have no issues when doing that. Notice the next one is another really useful feature that I'm pretty sure a lot of us have done before when we misplace our phone. These voices can help us find our device. Unfortunately, find my phone. Sorry, I can't locate phones here. While these two devices can definitely aid you in that, for example, find my phone. I can help by making your pixel ring on full volume right away. Would you like me to do that? No. Let's try something else. Should I call your phone ending in No. How about the one ending in Cancel. No problem, it's canceled. Alexa, find my phone. Welcome to Find My Phone by LifeBond. To get started, I just need your phone number. What's your number? Cancel. Goodbye. So Google and the Echo Dot were both able to aid you in certain ways on how to find your phone. Google was giving you a couple options. So if you have an Android phone, it could pin your device. Also, if you don't, it could also call your device. Siri, unfortunately, I was really surprised this feature wasn't enabled or have something that will help you or aid you in any way to find your phone especially since i'm using an iphone and that iphone's linked to the icloud account which the home pod is also linked to i was assuming it would do the same pin like google does with the android phones but unfortunately it does not also another thing that these two have that siri doesn't have at the moment is a broadcast or a drop-in like feature on Google, let's say you have kids, and instead of yelling across the room or across the house, you could just do this. Food is ready. And the kids could simply respond doing this on the Echo device. On our way. Received just now. This feature isn't available on Siri just yet, but maybe in the future we might see that. And if you have guests over or have kids and you want to keep them entertained, only these two devices are able to play mini games. For example, Hey Google, let's play a game. All right, there's Jungle Adventure, Sound Pet, Lucky Trivia for Families, and more. Which one do you want to try? Cancel. Okay, no problem. And then Alexa has these games too. Alexa, let's play a game. Okay, let's play a game. Do you want to give heads up? A try? Alexa, cancel. Ready? Thanks for playing. Come back soon. So both of these devices, I haven't reached a max, but they're mostly up to four player games, which is really awesome. So after testing and seeing all the end results, it's hard to even call the HomePod a voice assist because you'll think it'll perform just the same or even better compared to the Echo Dot and Google Home. Even though the Echo Dot got released in 2014, Two years later, Google Home got released in 2016. During that time when these two devices finally got into the market, Google Home wasn't this far back compared to Siri. I was expecting a lot more from Siri, especially since Siri had been released since the iPhone 4 days, way before we even had a Google Assist or an Amazon Voice Assist. So they were at one point ahead of the game. So my final verdict between these three Voice Assists, Siri HomePod is good for just common based like questions, like news, weather, measurements. It has no issue answering that. While Google and the Echo Dot is more than capable of just doing that and also have better privacy protection, thanks to that voice recognition. And these two are the only two that actually support the majority of smart home appliances, smart home tech, lights, etc. While Siri, you need to have a home kit supportive device and they usually tend to cost a bit more compared to these two. Let's say for example, you did have one of these two voice assists and you already had some smart home appliances already installed and they don't support home kit. You can create a device using a Raspberry Pi to install HomeBridge, which will allow you to use your current smart home devices to work with Siri. Like this video if you want me to create a tutorial video about this. But unfortunately, at the time of making this video, Apple hasn't announced any updates or any new features that they're gonna be integrating on the HomePod. So we might be seeing a new update maybe by the end of this year or maybe next year, hopefully sooner, to allow this thing to become a better voice assist. So let me know what you guys think. If you were to choose between one of these three, which one would you pick? And if you already own one, comment down below which one you own and how you liking it so far. And what are some cool things you could do with it? But as it sits right now, the Echo Dot and the Google Home are much more supportive compared to the Apple HomePod. The Apple HomePod is really strict and restricted. But if I was to choose between each one, even though the HomePod 
audio sounds really fantastic. It's not really worse to me, that is, the $349. I do live in a household that has the Apple ecosystem, but I also like using other devices at time. And for $349 with all those limitations, doesn't sell it to me. I can't even use this thing as a PC desktop speaker if I wanted to. So personally, out of these three, I'll still choose the Google Home. I just like how simple it is. There's no skills to be enabled. Once this thing is set up, that's it. The app is filled with a bunch of settings you could adjust and change if you like. Well, that's the end of this video. I hope you really liked this content. This took me a while to make, so I'll really appreciate if you could smash that like button, especially if you found this video informative, as well as subscribe to this channel if you're new. And go ahead and check out this video. I go more in depth about these two in a review. So if you're debating between picking up these cheap $50 voice assists, I highly recommend checking out that video, but until next time, hope to see you on the next video. Peace.